This video is brought to you by Sporling. Quality, integrity, tradition. And NAVAC, empowering you to work smarter. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the AKHVAC YouTube channel. I appreciate you tuning in. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for notifications as new videos drop. Thought today I'd do one I haven't done in a little while and kind of dig into the archives of notifications and comments on my channel and dig up some questions that's kind of fell through the cracks. Kind of do a rapid fire on the video here and just get through some of them and answer them for you guys. So we'll skip the usual small talk and we'll dive right in. Aditya Pradhan said, I'm a pretty quick learner, mechanically inclined. I have some landscaping experience, but zero HVAC. I'm 21, I'm looking to do a certification class or apprenticeship. Do you think in three to four years in the field, along with picking up different skill sets that you mentioned, like plumbing, electrical, etc., do you think it's realistic to hit the 90 to 100K mark? It's too broad of a question, man. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that in four years you'll be making six figures. There are many technicians across the country that'll tell you it's never gonna happen, that they're not there. A huge percentage of that is gonna be purely based off geography. There are some areas of the country that simply are not going to pay that kind of money for those kinds of services. Usually that's gonna be tied in relative to the cost of living for that area. But there are some instances where the tradespeople are typically paid well below what they should be, even relative to the cost of living. So you're gonna have to do your research on locations, where you wanna live, where you plan to live. Do you plan on being a technician your whole career or do you have aspirations to own a business? What type of HVAC do you wanna do? Are you gonna do residential? Are you gonna do commercial or an industrial? Are you gonna to stick to service work or installation work? These are all factors that are gonna tie directly to what the potential is for your income. So to make a short story long, do your research, determine where it is you wanna live, what exactly you want to do within the trade and go from there. On the Chiller Down, Strainer Danger video I put out last year, Doug C commented, could you have checked the pressure differential at the pump to tell if the strainer was clogged? Assuming the strainer is located in the suction diffuser at the pump, or any cavitation. Well, Doug, certainly it would help if you had a pressure gauge directly on the inlet and outlet of the pump to see if there was a differential outside of the norm. Naturally, a pump is gonna cause a pressure differential, and if you know what that baseline is, then yes, a sudden raise in that is gonna be an indication of a water flow issue, which could be caused by a plug strainer. If you recall in the video, I did use the pressure gauges that were a little bit further down the line to determine my pressures were out of whack. As far as the cavitation goes, cavitation is a vicious cycle that can be caused by a sudden low pressure, and then that cavitation causes damage to the impeller and grooves and nicks out of the impeller itself, which provides more homes for the cavitation bubbles to form and rupture which causes even more and it compounds itself into a very large problem and usually you end up with an impeller that looks like a bag of rocks on my so you want to be a service tech video from last year da2va asked i have a question is this a job you can learn as you go on the job or do you need to go to a trade school i've gone over this a lot of times in different situations throughout my time on youtube overall i'm a huge proponent of schools if you could afford them. Is this a trade you have to go to school to to be successful in? No. Does it give you a big leg up though and a jump start on your career if you do go to school? It can, it depends on who you are, how you applied yourself in that school. It's really easy in a lot of these schools to just roll through it and come out on the other side not much smarter than you were when you started. It's all about you and squeezing every resource you can out of that opportunity and that time you have in the classroom. It's a great time for networking, it's a great time for learning the trade, particularly if you're working at the same time. That's always been one of my biggest things to promote is trying to get your first job in the trade as a helper and go to school at night. That way you're reinforcing everything you learn in the classroom the next day when you're on the job. On my NAVAC cordless battery vacuum pump, the NP2 DLM, Travis Nelson commented, is there a link for the True Blue hose kit used with this NAVAC pump? I saw lots of options on the TrueTech website. Absolutely, it's right here. I'll also link below in the description with a link for the True Blue's hose kit as well as the NAVAC NP2 DLM battery operated vacuum pump. Narcotic Lemon commented, I have a question. I'm looking to get into refrigeration after I'm done with my electrical trade. Do you need to do HVAC first or can you just become an apprentice right away in the refrigeration area? 
Well, I mean, that's an interesting question. I've heard two ways that this plays out from guys that I know that have made that crossover. On the one side, it can really help if they started out with HVAC. And when you say that, you're talking comfort cooling versus refrigeration. Depending how good they were as an HVAC technician, they may have the mindset and the aptitude to where they take all that base knowledge and can easily apply that and use it to complement the additional things that make refrigeration unique. And for somebody with that mindset, that could be a huge asset that they started out in the HVAC side. On the other side of that coin, I've heard of some comfort cooling guys having a really hard time making that crossover. And it comes down to the individual. For some people, it's really hard to unlearn some of the principles that really just apply to comfort cooling and adapt to kind of the leeway you get in refrigeration. When I say leeway, I don't mean laxes and you can cut corners, but there's a lot of firm kind of rules in the comfort cooling side that there's a lot wider of a spectrum for refrigeration and a lot of it has to do with the condition of the evaporator quote right because now we're getting into things where they're getting cooled far below the point of freezing so now we're adding intricate defrost systems as well as different coil conditions and expansion valve settings if you're somebody that had a very hard time grasping the heating and air side I wouldn't necessarily think that going refrigeration would make it easier for you or be an easier move. But if you're somebody that took to the heating and air principles very well, and it's something you have the time to do, go for it. But otherwise, I know that we are in dire need for refrigeration technicians and many firms would be happy to take a young person with an electrical background and build them from the ground up without having to unlearn any bad habits. On my chiller leak at the UK baseball stadium video a few months back, Nate Gaddow commented, what is the difference between gray and white PVC? The schedule? No, that was Schedule 80 PVC, but you can get that in white or gray. That was purely customer preference. On my recent Zoom Lock giveaway video from earlier this month, Susie Dunn asked, AK, are you gonna become a supermodel? Susie, I don't have the kind of goods for that type of career, though I did make it into some low-level porn recently, going under the alias PP Burns. <sighs> On my 2018 Ford Transit 250 HVAC service vehicle tour video, Mr. Mo commented, I admire your passion for the trade, but damn, that's extreme. Be extreme in everything that you do. It's the only way that you'll stand out and get somewhere in life. And that's about it, guys. I'm gonna keep that to about 10 questions. I hope to do more of these in the future. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, bear in mind, if I don't get back to your comment or answer your question, your DM on Instagram, email, etc. It's just that I am one guy and I get a whole lot of them and I do my best with it, guys. So if I don't get back to you, I'll try to you know, comb through and catch some of the ones that fell through the cracks like these, even if the video is eight months old, get them on a video format and hopefully get an answer that's satisfactory to you. And with that, guys, stay safe out there. Hope you're all doing great. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah.